Hello again. Great to be talking to you again and we're continuing with our theme of life to the max and today's topic is generosity. Generosity to the max. We are called to be generous people. When you hear that word generosity, I wonder what comes to mind, what the first word that comes to mind is. And it's kind of the first thing I want to deal with because I think the first word that comes to mind is the sort of elephant in the room when anyone says the word generosity. And fortunately, I've got the elephant with me. The elephant in the room, money. As soon as we say generosity, we start to think about money. And that can cause some problems for us because for many of us, we might not have a lot of money to give and we might sort of not have what we think of as opportunities to give money. This is not gonna be a talk all about money. This is about generosity. And there's a big, big difference. Money is only a part of that. Let's explore it a little bit more. Money's always been part of generosity. If we look to Exodus and chapters 35 and 36, we could read about the people of Israel being so generous with their resources that Moses had to tell them to stop giving because they had enough for their building project. Uh, church leaders forever have been jealous of this, I'm sure. But we've also got Acts 11 and verse 29, where the believers gave as they were able to, to people who were experiencing struggles and hardships. It's good for us to be generous. Whatever your financial situation, if you've got that little bit that you want to give to somebody, that's a great thing for you to do. God doesn't want you to go into debt to give. He doesn't want you to be stressed about giving. Remember, God loves a cheerful giver. But God is generous, and as we become more Christ-like, we become generous too. But if the only way we can picture generosity is all about money, we're really actually missing out on the many, many ways we can be generous to the max. Let me give you an example about generosity. People in the church family heard that I was ill and decided that they would try and help us. And they really exercised generosity to the max. We found a bag with comics for the kids in it and a few treats for us had been left by one of the church family for us. A few people bought us meals and just saved Rachel particularly a lot of effort because she was trying to look after the kids, look after me while I was ill and, you know, just, just feed us. And it just gave her a, a couple of evenings where she had that little bit more time to relax and, and a little bit more time for herself to recover. It was really generous and appreciated. And uh, I know that we've still got all of their uh, bowls and things here. We, we will, honestly, we will give them back. They are here at the moment. We need to give them back. But it's very easy to say, ah, oh, well, that cost them money. That's the only thing it cost them, you know, because they had to go and buy the ingredients and they had to make the, the food and all that kind of stuff. But actually, I think that misses out a lot of the other things that they were generous with and actually things that we can apply however much money we've got in the bank or however much money we've got to give away. So I've tried to sort of think about how to illustrate these a little bit. So uh, let's see if this works. Here's the first thing. It cost them energy. They took some energy that they could have devoted to their own family, to their own time, and they invested it in somebody else. Generosity to the max can be about investing your energy into someone or something else. And actually that's something we can all get involved in and we can all do because we all have some energy that we can give where it's needed. So think about how you can invest your energy to help you to be generous to the max. It might be something at home that you can help a family member with. It could be something outside of home at some point in the future, but energy is something we can invest in. What else did those people invest that we can learn from? Here's another idea. Time. They took time to do something for somebody else. And a lot of us at the moment, we might feel that this is something we actually have a lot more of. Uh, for others, we might feel we've got a lot less, but we've got time. We can invest time in people. We can make a phone call. We can invest some words and some time in people to make them feel value, to make them feel cared for, to make them feel appreciated. We can invest in people 
in a really, really significant way. Some people are saying that they've never had so much contact with certain people since the lockdown started because they're, they're sort of become more aware of how precious those sort of relationships are. Perhaps that's you. But some of us might find that sometimes we're twiddling our thumbs a bit, we're doing the same old, same old, we're not really enjoying the time that we've got. That could be an opportunity for you to invest time in someone else that would really help you to be generous to the max. What else? Um, I've chosen keys. But uh, you might think I'm talking about investing your house in somebody else. And actually both Rachel and I have, have experienced other people's generosity in that, you know, we've both had opportunities to stay with other people when we were in a situation where we needed that. And people have been generous to us with their houses. But more than that, for me, this represents possessions, being generous with the things that we've been given, lending things to people. Uh, you know, that, that, that we, we physically own. I'm not talking about lending something that's, uh, you know, very precious to you, to somebody that you don't trust. I'm talking about thinking and praying about the resources that you have and whether you're going to invest them in other people, whatever that might be. But investing your possessions in other people is a great way to be generous to the max. And here's the last little sort of illustration I've got. I need to be careful picking this one up. You'll see why in a minute. Uh, what does that represent? Not multi-tools, although of course they come under possessions and you could lend them. I was trying to think of something that represented all of the different skills that we all have and this was the best I could come up with. If you've got something better, you can email us at manchester.youth at gochurch.cc and you can tell me what I should have done if you like. But one of the things that I like about uh, something like this as an illustration is that, you know, all of these tools do something slightly different. and. You know, we're a little bit like that. We've all got different skills. We've all got different things to bring. And it's really easy sometimes for us to think, oh, you know, I can't help because I'm not like that person. But actually there's a job that you would be able to do. It's a really good idea for you to invest your generosity and give your skills to people. And we've got people in church at the moment who are volunteering to help with editing the, the stuff that we're putting out on YouTube. There will be people this week who've been down to decorate the food bank centre that's, that's being set up to help those really needy people in our community. And there'll be people in our church family investing their pastoral skills, investing their practical skills in the, in the best way that they can for the people around them. You have got skills, you have got things that I'll put that down because it looks faintly threatening, doesn't it? Sorry, sort of menacing you all with a multi tool. But you know, you have got something that you can uh, in invest in other people, skills that you've got, creativity that you've got. So look for those opportunities to be able to invest in those things and, and, and give generosity to the max. The last thing I want to talk to you about on this theme of generosity to the max is about receiving. It might surprise you a bit because when we think about generosity, we're often thinking about what we give, but actually generosity to the max is also about receiving. We need to be the kind of people who accept generosity from others just as much as we want to give out generosity. I know that I've been in a position before where somebody's expressed generosity towards me and I've found that quite difficult and I've had to really think about what's going on in my own uh, spirit about why I'm struggling to receive generosity. As a family, we've been given a financial gift by a missionary family that enabled us to go to faith camp. And it kind of seemed the wrong way around to me. You know, we give to missionary families, they don't give to us, what does this mean? But we gratefully received that gift and it enabled us to do something that otherwise we probably wouldn't have done. Generosity is a core part of who we are in Christ, being generous and receiving that generosity back. If you've ever given to somebody who doesn't receive generosity well, you'll know that that can be quite a difficult experience. We don't want to perpetuate that. We don't want to make that culture. We want a culture where we give and we receive generosity to the max. Think about it this way. If all we do is give out, what stops us from becoming doormats? What stops us being taken advantage of in life if all we do is give out? 
In Philippians 2, this is explored a bit, and I, I encourage you to read it. It's, it's quite a, a famous chapter. And it talks about Jesus being in very nature God and having everything, considered himself nothing and made himself as a servant for us. But it also talks about this idea that we are called to look out for each other. So yes, I'm called to be generous, to give, but I'm also called, called to receive that generosity. And that means that none of us really should be taken advantage of because we're all looking out for each other's needs. Imagine being part of a community that's so generous that there's always more than people need. Imagine being part of a family where everyone has everything that they need. That's the sort of family that God wants us to be in. That's the sort of experience that God wants us to have. People willing to give us time, people willing to give us their energy and their skills. Sometimes maybe they might even give some money, but let's not get caught up in that. You've got something to give. Look for opportunities this week to give generously. Give generously to the max and be prepared to receive because generosity to the max is a two-way street. Very generous, thank you. Hey, come on, what's going on? Hey, come on, what are you trying to say?